with action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West. Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Here's Hoppy now with another new story. Peril at Pier 19. California and I had surely enjoyed our few days in San Francisco and were looking forward to our last night before heading back for the Bar 20. Our job of overseeing a shipment of the Bar 20's best breeding stock was finished that day when we saw it loaded aboard the cattle boat Pacific Queen. Now all we had to do was return to the boat to collect the money for the cattle from Mr. Carwell, the Australian rancher. It was just starting to get dark as we walked along the pier toward the Pacific Queen. That concern fog's starting to roll in again, Hoppy. We better hurry up or we won't never find our way back to the bright light. <laughs> uh, you just take it easy, California. We got the whole night ahead of us. Yeah, that's just it. I want to make the most of it. Say, this Frisco is quite a town, ain't it? Yeah, it sure is. I guess it's got just about everything. Yeah, I wouldn't give you two cents for all this water, though. Uh, I don't see how them sailors stand it. Well, I suppose they don't see how we stand ranch life. Uh, well, maybe you're right, but as far as I'm concerned, that ocean business is strictly for the fish. <laughs> just give me dry land. <laughs> Well, maybe you'd better wait here, then, while I go aboard this old cub and get the money. I wouldn't want you getting seasick. Oh, shucks, Hoppy, as long as it don't get any further away than this from the dock, uh, I don't mind. Well, get on up that gangplank, then. I'll bet old man Caldwell and his daughter and that Wainwright fellow will be glad enough to get off this thing in time they get back to Australia. Oh, California, most folks don't feel the way you do about oceans and boats. They're having a fine trip out of this. Well, let's see now. As I remember, we got to go downstairs and towards the back end of this concern. <laughs> I hope no sailors ever hear you talking. It's not downstairs and towards the back end. We go below and aft. Uh, what's the difference? So long as we find Caldwell's cabin, collect the money, and get back to town. Well, the cowboy's back again. Welcome aboard. Decide to sail for down under with us? Hello, Captain. No, just paying our last visit. Got a little business with Mr. Carwell. Say, the ship looks deserted. Aye, it is almost. Our last night in port, most of the men are ashore. I've just kept a skeleton crew aboard. Uh-oh, that does it, Hoppy. Let's get out of here. Now they're running this thing with dead people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, is Mr. Carwell in his cabin? Aye, they're all aboard. Uh, can I show you the way? Oh, that won't be necessary. We can find it all right. Well, I'll get back up to the bridge then. My third mate's taken sick. I'm having to take his watch. I'll uh, see you later, Captain. Come on, California. Hmm. Some boat. If this is the Pacific Queen, royalty sure slipping. Huh, Hoppy? What do you uh, expect of a cattle boat? The Palace Hotel? Wait a minute. I think this is Carwell's cabin right here. Well, the door's half open. Let's see if he's in there. Mind if we come in, Mr. Carwell? California and I... Wainwright, what's happened here? I, I, I don't know. I, I came in just a moment ago and, and found him lying here like this. Oh, by Jove, do you suppose he's uh, dead? <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Peril at Pier 19. Hoppy and California have taken a shipment of breeding stock to San Francisco, where it was loaded aboard a cattle boat, which was to sail the next day for Australia. They returned to the ship that evening to receive payment for the cattle from a Mr. Caldwell, an Australian rancher. When they got to his cabin, however, they discovered Caldwell lying on the floor. 
his future son-in-law, Cedric Wainwright, kneeling beside him. Come on, men. Help me get him up on his bed. Easy now. <clears throat> That's it. Is he hurt bad, Hawkins? I don't know. His head split open, but I can't tell how serious it is. I say, this is terrible. All the money is missing from his little strong box. Looks to me like you're more worried about the money than you are about Mr. Carwell, Wainwright. Oh, now, see here. Never mind. California, you better get right up and tell the captain what's happening and get a doctor pronto. And tell the captain not to let anybody off this ship. I got you, Hoppy. I'll be back. Cook as a can. I say, Cassidy, uh, the bounder that did this must be captured. Uh, who do you suppose it could be? That's just what I'd like to know. You say you just came in before we got here? That's right. Uh, you see, I- I've been in my cabin, dressing. Oh, uh, here you are, Cedric. Oh, hello, Mr. Cassidy. Darling, we really must... Father. Father, what's happened? Oh, steady now, Ellen. He's steady. hurt. Cedric, how did it happen? Well, it appears that some chap struck him over the head and robbed the strong box, Ellen. At any rate, the money is missing. Oh, poor father. I was afraid something like this might happen. But he simply wouldn't listen to me. Excuse me, Miss Ellen, but what did you mean he wouldn't listen to you? Well, father brought the money aboard the ship two days ago and put it in a little strong box. I tried to persuade him to leave it at the bank, but he said nobody would even know he had the money here in his cabin. That's right, Cassidy. I remember that was the day Mr. Russo visited the ship and gave Mr. Caldwell the wine. Mr. Russo? Oh, you've heard of Russo's, the famous Italian restaurant here in San Francisco? Oh, yes, yes. Well, you see, Mr. Caldwell knew Antonio Russo years ago in Europe. Father looked him up when he arrived in San Francisco. Mr. Russo's been extremely kind to all of us. I see. And was Mr. Russo here when you were discussing where your father's keeping the money here in the cabin? Why, why yes. Yes, Mr. Russo had brought Father a case of his finest wine, and while he was here, we got to talking about the money. Mr. Russo agreed with Cedric and me that it was dangerous to keep it here. And as far as your father knew, nobody but yourselves and Mr. Russo knew he'd brought the money here? Exactly. I don't see how anyone else could possibly have known. And to make us feel better, Father told us he'd hide the little box in the bottom of the case of wine. We all thought that an excellent idea. Well, sometimes things don't turn out quite the way we figure. By the way, have either of you ever seen this before? Why, yes. That looks like Mr. Russo's stick pin. By Jove, it is. Where'd you find it, Cassidy? It was lying here on the floor, right beside Mr. Caldwell. That fellow was aboard for a while. Left just before you came. Say, do you suppose... I don't suppose anything just yet, Captain. But it looks like Mr. Russo's got some mighty tall explaining to do. Well, he was the only landlubber to come aboard ship this afternoon. Doesn't strike me as being the kind of man who would slug and rob somebody. Well, I guess you never can tell. That's right. You never can tell. How many crew members are on the ship, Captain? Well, like I told you, Hank Grossman, he's my third mate. He took sick. He's been bunked down in quarters all afternoon. Outside of him and myself, there's just a couple of ordinary seamen aboard. And where would I find them? Well, they're down in the cattle hold. But if you're suspicion in any of my crew, you're off your course. Well, no harm in checking up a little. Can't be too careful about a thing like this, Captain. Aye, you're right, Cassidy. Uh, can I show you how to find them? No, thanks. I think we can find them all right. Uh, the doc says he's going to be all right, Hoppy. He thinks he'll be conscious again pretty soon. Good. Come on, California, let's go. We sure didn't learn anything from them two sailors below. No, maybe we'll have better luck with Grossman. Ah, uh, this must be his cabin here. It ain't locked up in that out. You, Grossman, the third mate? Yeah, what about it? Can't you see I ain't feeling good? We just wanted to ask a couple of questions, Grossman. You see, Mr. Caldwell's not feeling so good either. Got a bad headache. And it was caused by someone sneaking up and slugging him over the head. Yeah? What's that got to do with me? Maybe nothing. I just thought you might have seen or heard something that would help us pick up the trail. Nope. I'm afraid I can't help you. I told you I ain't feeling good. Now get out of here. Such hospitality. All right, Grossman. We'll be glad to clear out. Just one more question. 
What's this thing here under your bunk? Get away from here. Put that back. Oh, don't get up. Don't get up. Remember, you're a sick man. What do you call this thing, anyway? It's a belaying pin, stupid. Well, well. So that's a belaying pin. Say, that would make quite a thing for hitting a man's skull, wouldn't it? What was it doing under your bunk, Grossman? Yeah. You think you're pretty smart, don't you? Why, everybody's got one of them. They're all over the ship. And do they all have blood stains on them? Yes, they can, cowboy. You're way off. I use that one to kill rats with. And there's plenty of them on this tub. Mind if I take this along for a souvenir? Go ahead. Just get out and leave me alone. Come on, California. Mr. Grossman must get his rest now. Hey, this here market street's really something, ain't it? <laughs> Better if it weren't for the fog, you could see a thousand lights. Yeah, it's quite a place. Probably be as big as St. Louis someday. Ah, this looks like Russo's place right ahead. You still think somebody besides that third mate's in on the robbery, huh? I'm downright certain of it. Somebody must have told him that money was on the ship and where it was hidden. Well, let's see if Mr. Russo's in. Say, this is the right fancy eating place, Hoppy. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Uh, welcome to Rosso's. I, I got a nice table you're going to like. All right, this away, please. Oh, good idea. I'm nice starved to death. We haven't got time to eat now, California. I guess we can sit and have a cup of coffee, though. Uh, here you are, gentlemen. Please, uh, sit you down. Oh, uh, waiter, we came here to see Mr. Russo. Is he around? <laughs> That's very funny. You see, I'm a Russo. Uh, what I can I do for you? My name's Cassidy, Mr. Russo, and this is California Carlson. We brought out the shipment of cattle that Mr. Caldwell bought. Oh, sure. I hear him talk about you. I understand you saw him at the ship this afternoon. That's right. I make him a little visit to have a little talk. Why? Mr. Russo, your friend Caldwell was found in his cabin unconscious just a few minutes after you left. What's he that? He'd been hit over the head. He's lucky to be alive. Oh, that's a too bad. I warned him somebody robbed the money. I warned him. Who said anything about robbing him, Russo? How did you know about that? Well, I didn't know, but uh, why else somebody going to knock him unconscious? I ask you, why else? They tell me you knew where he hid the money. Is that right? Oh, sure, sure. I... Sir, wait a just a minute. You don't think uh, I'm going to want to... Wait a minute. This belong to you, Russo? Why, sure. That's my stick pin. Where do you find that? In Carwell's cabin. Right beside his unconscious body. But that's not the possible. I lost that stick pin a couple of days ago. Maybe. How long since you've seen Hank Grossman, Russo? Hank Grossman. Hank Grossman. I uh, don't know somebody named Hank Grossman. Who's he? Never mind. California, let's get back to the ship. And, uh, Russo, you better stick around where we can find you. Now, just a minute. The water right you got to tell me? Take I speak it of... easy. Take it easy. Just don't wander too far away. But I want to go down and see Mr. Colwell. He's my friend. You know, I think that's a fine idea. We'll be looking for you. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's all I can tell you, Cassidy. But you see, I didn't even get a glimpse of the beggar. It happened just after Russo had left. The door was still open, my back was turned when I was struck down. And you can't be sure about whether Russo was wearing a stick pin while he was here? No, I can't. I just don't know. But uh, I thought you were convinced this blighter Grossman is the man who robbed me. I am, Mr. Carwell. But I'm also convinced that he just did the dirty work and somebody else planted it. I say, that sounds plausible. Thanks, Wainwright. Well, uh, what do you propose doing now? I found that the maritime office is not far from the pier, and there's somebody there all night. There's a couple of things I want to check on there. So California and I'll see if we can find the place. See you later, Mr. Carwell. I tell Cassidy, and do have a care now, won't you? See how you expect to find your way off this pier, Hoppy, let alone finding that merry time office. <laughs> now, don't tell me you let a little fog hold you back. Little fog? Hmm. What a way to spend our last night in first. Oh, stop complaining. If we hurry up, we might still get through with this business in time to have some fun. I sure hope so, but uh, what do you expect to discover? All right, the... cowboys, get your hands up. And don't try anything funny. Get the guns, Jake. 
Well, if it doesn't sound like Mr. Grossman, feeling better, I see. It's me, all right. But don't turn around. Just keep walking right over to the edge of the pier. Uh, down them steps. All right, stop right there. Tie their hands behind them, Jake. Yeah. What do I do with the guns? Toss them in the drink. <laughs> Where they're going, they won't need them. Just, uh, where are we going, anyway? <laughs> You'll find us soon enough. Hurry up, Jake. All right, my Here, get that ticket. All right, get in the boat. Both of you lay down on the bottom there. Right, Jake. Shove off. Mind letting us in on your plan, Grossman? Well, I'd be glad, you cowboy. It's very simple. We roll out in the bay a little ways, tie them two anchors to your leg, and over you go. <laughs> Permanent. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Peril at Pier 19. Hoppy in California, sure that somebody besides third mate Grossman was behind the attack and robbery of Mr. Caldwell left the cattle boat to do some more investigating. As they walked along the fog-shrouded pier, a voice from behind ordered them to put up their hands. They were quickly disarmed and tied, put in a small rowboat, and told by Grossman that they would soon be thrown into the bay with anchors tied to their legs. Gosh, Hoppy, looks like curtains, don't it? I don't know. Jake didn't do too good a job tying my hands. I can just work them loose. You better hurry. I can't watch mine. Listen, California. Our legs aren't tied yet. There's just a chance. What do you mean, Hobby? When they stop to tie those anchors to our feet, they're going to have to bend over us. Yeah, sure, but... It's our only chance. Wait till I give the signal and kick your man like a Missouri mule. I got you, Hobby. I hope it works. This ought to be far enough, Jake. Yeah. Wonder how these cowboys like fish. <laughs> Come on, I'll tie one of these anchors on the old geezer, and you get the other one. Okay. Yeah. These things are heavy enough. Well, you dust eaters are about to have a diving lesson. <laughs> now, California. Hey, grab me! I got my hands free now. Well, that ought to take care of Grossman for a while. Help! I can't swim. What you doing, Hoppy? I'm tying Grossman up. I'm being a little more careful about it than his pal Jake was. Now, that ought to hold him. I'll get you yet, cowboy. Here, California, let me get you untied. It'll be a pleasure. Help me! Help me! Uh, there, I can get my hands out now, Hoppy. All right, now let's fish out this wharf rat and tie him up. Oh, to leave the varmint where he is. Oh, come on, give me a hand. All right. There he is. Now, put a rope around him, California. And we'll see if we can get this thing back to dry. For me, it'd be a miracle if we can find our way, though. That wasn't bad navigating for a cow end, was it? Only missed this pier by two others. Probably a lucky thing we landed where we did. That night watchman at the warehouse will take good care of them seagoing coyotes. Yeah, now if we can just corral the other one. Yeah, them two are sure stubborn. Here we got them dead to rights, and they still won't tell us who put them up to all this. Well, it shouldn't take long to find out. Hmm. I feel like uh, I've been up and down this here gangplank so much, I'm, I'm beginning to feel like a member of the crew. <laughs> Maybe you can get the third mate's old job. Yeah, that's an... Uh, no, oh, no, sir, not me, not me. Come on, there's a light up in the pilot house. Let's go up and see the captain. Yeah, he ought to be interested about his third mate. I just wonder if that Jake was a member of this crew. I don't know. He seemed to know Grossman pretty good anyway. Ah, looks like the captain's inside, all right. Yes, what is it? Oh, Cassidy. Why... I thought you'd gone ashore. We did, Captain. And we almost went for a swim, too. Swim? I don't understand. Have you got a crew uh, member named Jake? Jake? Why, yes, yes. I signed on to Jake Richards just the other day. Friend of the third mate. Why? 
Your third mate and his friend just tried to drown us in the bay, that's why. Grossman? Why, I can't believe it. Why, he, he's always... A... Why would they try to drown you, Cassidy? Because somebody gave them orders to. Somebody that planned the robbery of Caldwell. Well, where are they now? Let's find them. I'll notify well, them. That won't be necessary, Captain. We put them in a nice, safe place. Well, if somebody else is mixed up in this, uh, why not make Grossman and Jake tell who it is? Yeah, but right now, we've got the uh, other business below. Oh, uh, see, that reminds me. That Russo fella came aboard a while ago. Is he down with Cowell now? As far as I know, he is. Well, we better get down there, too, hadn't we, Hoppy? Yeah. You gonna be around, Captain? I, I'm staying aboard. Good. We'll see you later. Come on, California. Weren't you looking for a hoppy? Mm, funny, I thought I had a silver dollar in my pocket, but I guess I don't. What intonation you want a dollar for now? Just wanted to try something. Uh, you got one? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, here you are. Thanks. Oh, gone, hoppy. Are you gone from local? Uh, what you throw it down there for? No, we'll never find it. <laughs> oh, don't get excited. What's a dollar between friends? What's your... Well, I'll be... I heard about folks throwing money away, but I never thought I'd look to see the day when you throw mine away. <laughs> oh, forget it. Come on, let's get down and see how Carwell's making out. Coffee, I'd feel a lot better if I still had a six-gun handy. Yeah, so would I, but you just hang on to that belaying pin and... Uh... Oh, it's Mr. Cassidy in California. Come in. Father's feeling ever so much better. Well, I'm sure glad to hear it. Good to see you, Cassidy. Thanks, Mr. Caldwell. Hello, Wainwright. And how are you, Mr. Russo? Close to fine, thank you. Well, quite a get-together here. Well, I thought I'd better look into my passengers. Everything ship shape, Mr. Caldwell? Everything's fine, Captain. Nice of you to inquire. Come in, Captain. I was about to tell Mr. Caldwell my ideas concerning the robbery. Would you like to hear them? Aye, by all means. I say, Cassidy, have you solved the case already? I think so, Mr. Carwell. Go on, old man. Tell us everything. Sure. What's in the story? What's a happen? We were right about Grossman, Mr. Carwell. He's the one that robbed you. And he tried to kill us a little while ago. By Joe. Did he really? Oh, no. Yeah, but he was only acting on orders. The man who planned everything knew we were going ashore and told Grossman to make sure we didn't leave the pier alive. But... <laughs> I don't understand. Uh, none of us breathed the word. You didn't have to. He discovered our plans the same way he found the money was aboard and where it was hidden. California, take that grill off the ventilator opening in the wall there. Right, right. Hoppy. There she is. Now look inside. See anything at the bottom of the shaft? Well, well, I'll be darned. Uh, here's a silver dollar. <laughs> What in heaven's name are you driving at, Cassidy? Just this. When you and the others were discussing the money and where to hide it, somebody could hear every word you said. But I, I don't understand. That ventilator shaft runs right up to the bridge, and its open end is right next to the pilot house. Somebody listening up there could hear voices in the cabin as well as through a speaking tube. By Joe, then it must Why, be... you... Look out! He must have a gun! Get him, California! Oh. Oh. Ah. <clears throat> That ought to keep you in port for a while, Captain. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. Good heavens, I simply can't eat another bite. Say, that rooster fellow sure sets a pretty good table at that. Decent of him, inviting us all to be his dinner guests. Well, uh, how's the dinner? You like it, the seafood? Ah, oh, it's great, Mr. Russo. You know, I wouldn't want any of the Bar 20 boys to hear me say this, but that seafood tasted better than many a steak I've had. Oh, hoppy. <laughs> but don't ever repeat that, please. Oh, we've enjoyed it so much, Mr. Russo. Uh, that's a good. I just wish your papa could be here, too. I know he does, too. But doctor's orders, you know. Next trip you make, we do it again. How's that, huh? By Joe Vellon, that reminds me. The shipping company said we'll be leaving tomorrow after all. They're putting on another captain and third mate. And thanks to Mr. Cassidy, the cattle will be aboard, too. <laughs> Don't thank me, Miss Ellen. 
California is the one who found the money in the captain's cabin. Oh, we owe you both a debt we can never repay. I only hope someday you two get down to Australia so you can see our ranch and be our honored guest. Will you do it? Well, I can't promise anything, but we'll sure try. Good. Oh, there's one other thing. Father told me to order you both a pair of the finest six-shooters made. But you see, I don't know much about that sort of thing. Well, I, I say, uh, why not let them tell us what to get? That's just what I had in mind. How about it, California? Well, I reckon... Uh... Better just get him a rifle for long-range work, Miss Ellen. He doesn't have any use for six guns. Why, well, how well, Whatever you... you mean. What's he going to use in close quarters if he doesn't have six guns? <laughs> Just give him a belaying pin. He's pretty handy with one of those. <laughs> Thus ends Hoppy in California's exciting adventure in San Francisco, titled Terrell at Pier 19. Next time, we find them in the Rio Grande country of Texas, where their dangerous adventure begins as death crosses the river. Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Feral at Pier 19 was written by Robert T. Smith. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production.